Well, I don't have any, uh, I don't have any formal presentation, so I'm just going to maybe to present the term and then showing some images of uh, the Transvestite Museum, which was actually the project that I, 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 I was uh, mentioning in the, in the, in the draft, in the abstract. Okay. Um, and I think it's interesting because um, uh, this uh, project and the idea of transvestite or drag has a lot of resonances with uh, some concepts that were presented here, uh, you know, like in different ways, uh, like evidence or fragility or loser. And I, I, I think it's interesting also because what I really like about transvestite um, is, uh, you know, understand uh, the, the possibility to understand the transvestite body as, a, as an archive, as an archive of performative practices, you know, like the, this kind of inf infinite possibilities of becoming something new, uh, like, like you are um, rejecting uh, any kind of stability or any stable identity and you are recreating uh, different possibilities uh, all the time, you know, and, and also this is interesting because of the discussion we were trying to have before about how, for example, fictions can uh, have effects in reality, how can actually fiction creates reality, produces reality, you know? So, um, I'm going to just read briefly the, 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 the term. Uh, you have it, but maybe we can discuss more in deep about it, but transvestite, uh, travesti in Spanish, well, transvestite is a popular word in Latin America that means drag usually refers to the person who cross-dress his body, rejecting any natural or essential identity order. Transgender community has been largely marginalized and rendered invisible to most mainstream communities, and it is still the most vulnerable people in most of the Latin American countries. The transvestite makes visible the workings of gender, revealing its contingency, as well as the performative possibilities of challenging gendered norms. Transvestite performance highlights how bodies are discursively produced and how identity is never fixed, emphasizing the relationship between bodies and subjectivity, and, tack and tackling down a notion of politics concerned with identifications. From a southern perspective, the concept of transvestite could help us to explore in different ways the politics of becoming understood as an, al as a, an analogy of, for the mask, the false, the copy, the theatrical, the camouflage, etc. Dramatism appears as a useful analytical concept capable of visibilizing and thinking the processes of colonization, resistance, hybridization, and mestizaje. So, I, and I, I, I was thinking in this um, specific project, the Transvestite Museum of Peru, that you probably, some of you already know, uh, uh, was presented this year at the Sao Paulo Biennial, a big installation of this uh, of this project, which is is actually is not a, an artistic project. This is important to say. I mean, it's a it's a project that was created by a drag um, activist um, and philosopher, Giuseppe Campuzano, in 2004, and it was more like an historical research. He was actually trying to uh, create a local genealogy for transgender, you know, and in in this case, it's like um, uh, digging, digging out, uh, trying to to investigate uh, this kind of uh, ritual androgyny, androgynity of uh, Andean culture and indigenous cultures. So he was, for example, uh, seeing um, like folkloric dances, you know, like this, uh, the 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 use of an an androgynous mask in some local dances or some rit ritualities, I'm going to, to show some images related to this. But, um, but it was important to say that it is not an artistic project, it was actually presented in some kind of artistic context, but the project is most like an activist project, and most of the time it was presented like this, you know, like in the streets. Um, and as the name says, it's Transvestite Museum, it's also a museum of, the, of, the, of, of appropriated images, of, of most of the documents and material that Giuseppe presents are, are, are falsifications or appropriations or, or, or document that he stole, that he used with no, um, 
uh, with no permission. So, okay, I'm going just to read briefly because I think it's, it will be more, more organized this way. So almost a decade ago, the Peruvian philosopher and drag queen Giuseppe Campuzano created the project Museo Travesti Transvesta Museum of Peru. This museum is an attempt to present a queer counter-narrative, a promiscuous intersectional thinking of history that collects objects, images, texts, and documents, press clippings, and appropriated art artworks, and proposes actions, stagings, and publications that fracture the dominant models of production of images and bodies. The project, situated halfway between performance and historical research, proposes a critical reviewing of the history of Peru from the strategic perspective of a fictional figure that Campuzano calls the androgynous, indigenous, mixed race, transvestite. Here, transgender, transvestite, transsexual, intersexual, and androgynous figure are posited as the central actors and main political subjects for any construction of history. One of the museum's achievements is having established a politically corrosive and discontinuous narrative of transgender, which undoes the foundational myths and ideological fantasies that hides under the order of the state. In that sense, this museum signals the need for a new founding project to open the human horizon towards new legacies that escape rational assurance, building an antagonist body to the national project. Unlike large institutional projects and their discursive discourses of authority, this nomadic museum does not attempt to represent and integrate minorities into the dominant discourses of progress and happiness. It is rather a deliberately artificial device that dramatizes official histories and fractures the privileged sites of heterosexual subjectivity, a subjectivity that turns all difference into an object of study and renders invisible its own contingency and the social processes that led to his construction. The museum's portable condition, his ability to function as a parasite to any scenario, from public squares, street markets, neighborhood fairs, to university conferences, has also allowed it to question forms of orthodox activism, proposing instead an, an, amor an amorphous and elusive political subject. The Transvestite Museum of Peru functions as an experimental uh, wager that vandalizes classical theory and history through an irreverent rewriting of transversal imaginaries, reference and knowledges for a subject unable and unwilling to fit in any existing taxonomy. The transversal historical readings that the Transvestite Museum fosters can be thought of um, with those elements and images in its collection of appropriations which propose a queer rewriting of the past by means of concepts such as therapeutic, uh, duality, plumaria, uh, featherly, plumaria is feather, perceptive, etc. Revolution, epic, among many others. This is, for example, the, the plumaria section, uh, featherly. Um, this uh, section takes the feather as a pretext. No, charting an iconography trajectory which start with the image of the large plume of Manco Capac imperial dress. This is the first Inca leader uh, of, of Inca Imperium, the first leader of Inca Imperium. This is a drawing from 16th century, the first indigenous chronicler uh, in America. Um, linking this image to the costumes uh, of the Harcabusier angels of 18th century colonial America. This is a painting made by Cusco uh, Painting School, indigenous uh, painters in 18th century that were appropriating this uh, America, the Spanish uh, iconography, Baroque iconography. Um, so who used colonial Catholic iconography to represent Baroque virgins and warriors, and also linked with contemporary artworks or the glamorous plumages of show showgirls and drag queens. In another uh, cartography, this is mestizaje, miscegenation, I guess it's the translation. The museum reflects uh, on the ethnic and sexual migrations that led to other ge geopolitics of body. For example, a representations of tapadas. This is a t a tapadas, this is a drawing from 18th and 19th century. A uh, woman with their face veiled. This is a legacy of the Moorish Spanish Islamic migration in, in, in America. 
um, linked with photographs of Chinese opera singers. This is 19th century, you know, in, in the Chinese opera theater, um, there were not women allowed to, 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 to be on stage, so this, uh, the men were also um, presenting the, 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 the roles of women. So this is uh, some important uh, photograph from 19th century and also linked with different images of travestism from very famous uh, phot photographic studios in 19th century, and also to some drawings made by uh, scientific uh, colonial or, or research expeditions, uh, French, this is in the cases, Leons and Grant, the French uh, watercolorist uh, in, in America. So, well, Campuzano also examined, uh, examined uh, the forms of local religiosity, putting in tension the, the sacredness of some representations uh, through uh, exhibitions, uh, installation, and performances uh, that update instances of androgenity, uh, andro androgynous devoutness, and figures of unauthorized queer worshiping. And maybe there is an image of this. For example, this is a very important. Uh, performance that actually he calls in action because he appears uh, just standing still and uh, in the in the shores in the cliff of a beach in Lima and he 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 he, he said that this uh, this kind of situation induced some kind of aborted pil pil how do you say um pil pilgrimage pilgrimage yeah pilgrimage you know, because the people who actually, it's like we have the the the, the highway next to the, the next to the coast. So people who actually saw to see a virgin, you know, in the in the in the beach, actually um, um, uh, approach to the to him and and discover that he's a, a faggot, a queer, uh, you know, like a so. Um, well, among several others, the Transvestite Museum faces us with two key questions. How to write the history of subjects who have been continu continuously erased from history? And secondly, what kind of knowledge do the bodies of sexual minorities produce that are still unintelligible to the dominant modes of discourse and narrative construction? It is important to know that in thinking, that in thinking the trans body as well as several other minority positions, we are faced with a set of bodies where the disposition of their human condition has historically persisted not through, not through registering and surveillance, but through silence and the general effacement or erasure of, the, of their traces in the official records when the few of existing traces have not... Oh, sorry. Has not been um, uh, just uh, used to pathologize, exclude, or normalize difference. If the disappearance of these bodies has been a feature in the formation of classical archives and traditional historiographies, the tax of designing trans feminist and queer cartographies requires an approach that rejects identifications and reinvents those histories that, uh, that does not exist through possible and fiction, and fic and fiction bodies. It is in this sense that the Transvestite Museum collaborates to denaturalize and disrupt a false social construct and also bring together a new troop of co and coalition of monster, nat uh, kitsch native, poor virgins, and the drag queens, androgynous dancer, and indigenous trans people questioning the Western colonial modern construction of sexuality and offering other geopolitical morphologies from which to resist and act. So, and I think it's interesting also this uh, last part because um, before we were discussing about how, how to construct histories and what are the possibilities to construct a history that a subject that was totally in a way ignored or erased or pathologized as a trans body, you know, and for Giuseppe that was very clear. He, for example, created this archive, what he called the Transvestite Archive, and it was a research about how the trans body how has been um, has appeared in the press since the 1960s until the present, and then he was expanding this research. Um, 
And he was also using these images in some uh, demonstrations and presentation that he, he, he had, he organized in Lima, for example. This is a cover to show, Courir para Mostrar, a demonstration that he organized in the context of uh, general elections in Peru. So he actually asked some of his friends, uh, prostitutes and transvestites, to use these images of how the the trans body had appeared in the press, you know, as I said, usually uh, through, uh, you know, ridiculizing, persecuting, pathologizing this body and use it, uh, just show it them. Uh, okay, so yeah, maybe I can stop here. Uh, I I wanted to be sure if I understood that uh, your your term travestite um, is different from uh, Susan Sontag camp in the sense that you are not interested in any aesthetical aspect. Uh, you're talking about. Uh, uh, political rights and uh, social inclusions, blah, blah, but uh, uh, y you will, uh, this project or this museum, because as it is in a museum, we have the tendency to uh, understand that it has something related to visual, visuality and art. And uh, it's a curiosity about how yeah. camp can uh, cross your research. Yeah, well, it's, it's, uh, there are t I mean, uh, what I, when I um, uh, was thinking about transvesta, I was thinking uh, of uh, the possibility of uh, what are the political possibilities of using an, a strategic identity that is changing all the time. Because, I mean, transvesta is, is just that. I mean, it's like you can actually uh, change your identity, you know, uh, all the, all, the, all the, I mean, whenever you want, the way you want, uh, and what are the political possibilities of this kind of elusive uh, subject, you know, that I mean, and, and can actually how this also um, this kind of performative infinite possibilities for the body is a is a, um, is a politicization of uh, of the appearance. In a way, you know, so he's probably connected in that sense. But camp, I mean, I guess uh, Susan Sontag's uh, camp concept is going in a different direction. I'm thinking he here about performativity, you know, more like uh, this kind of endless changing and endless becoming, and this, I mean, this shift that operates in Giuseppe's project when he's using this uh, performativity of the body, of the appearance. Uh, and he uses uh, to uh, create this kind of performative institution, you know, and an institution does this museum that is uh, changing his form all the time, you know, and also its collection and the meaning of the objects and the material that is belongs to the museum in a way are, are actually transforming their meanings all the time. I mean, it happens, of course. I mean, we, we as curators know that the meanings of the works change all the time. But in this case, he, he, it is more like um, creating this kind of a, a, a radical institution that is based on, on the falsification, on the copy, you know? And so, yeah, it's this kind of translate, uh, this transition that I, I was interested in thinking, you know? Yeah. No. No, no, it's just an archive. I mean, he's, it's his personal archive. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, at his place, uh, yeah. Uh, hi. I was just wondering um, how other words intersect with what you're doing. Uh, the word masculinities um, and the word freak. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because I guess, it's, again, it's about like um, the word transvestite or tra travesti, I don't know which one, but again, it's the language of identity and some of these words are not translatable in other countries. And I don't know if travesti 
is a translatable term. I, 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 I'm not sure because when you say drag and dra transgender, they are not the same things, right? And so how, there's, is there, is, can this be narrated in, a, in any universality or is it unique to this specific space? Well, that's a good question. I mean, I, I was actually thinking if transvestite is a, uh, I don't know about the, the translation either. I mean, I'm, 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 that's why I actually decided to put also the, the, the word in Spanish. Uh, um, I wasn't uh, sure about the, the word. Um, I mean, it's, it's, uh, I, that's a discussion that we'd like to have actually, you know, that if it's translatable or not, yeah. I think this is a very relevant discussion mm -hmm. because for me it was very interesting that you use travesti mm -hmm. and not queer. Mm -hmm. Right now in Spain there are several groups introducing queer as a term and discussing about it, but since it's, it's a foreign uh, language term, it's not like getting into the popular culture. It's just very struck in very elite uh, cultural discussion groups. So. It is interesting we use popular words because they hold on a whole a multi layered uh, wall within it, and they have more possibilities of being a political term. But then we do have this problem of translation. How do we construct like global equivalences when we want to keep this cultural site specific uh, charge of a word? Well, Giuseppe actually uh, you, you usually reject the idea of call himself a queer or for the project, you know. He was preferred to use the word maricón in Spanish, which is like fagot, you know, like it's a, a, a maricón, well, yeah, a marica, or travesti, you know, yeah. Sí, te, te pregunto en castellano y respondes en inglés. Y, um, me, inter me interesa saber cómo estás leyendo eh, el cuerpo travesti o como, o como lo trabajaba Campuzano también, como índice de colonial, si el punto está en eh, cómo el, eh, la aparición del travesti, de la tapada, perturba la normalización del cuerpo en el momento eh, de la constitución del Estado-Nación, o si es porque trae eh, la materia oculta del andrógeno indígena, o, no sé, que me, que me cuentes un poco más porque es un tema que nos interesa en particular. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She asked about how the in Campuzano projects appear the idea of, uh, uh, how the coloniality, refle reflection about coloniality is present. Um, and if it's uh, because uh, of the tapadas of this uh, body who has the, 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 the face veil, half veil, uh, per, uh, disturbs the project of the national states, or if it's because uh, is uh, how, how was the how was the last part? Si era la tapada o or if it's because he, he was try tracing this. Uh, uh, sexual practice in the indigenous communities. I think about, I mean, both. I mean, it's uh, um, uh, Giuseppe is his uh, thing, travest, travestismo, travestism, probably, um, as a ritual, you know? So he's actually, uh, the idea of the, the rituality is what's very important for him. Uh, I mean, maybe more important than the word performance, you know, rituality. And rituality is also connected with uh, indigenous rituals, you know? Uh, so um, he was definitely uh, trying to create this kind of uh, indigenous uh, genealogy for androgenity or transvestite. I mean, he was uh, in a way criticizing or, create or, or putting in, into question this uh, white um, um, northern you know, construction of the queer body and trying to uh, recover uh, some uh, mom mo moments of ambivalence, of gender ambivalence, you know, before the colonization. And he actually did a very interesting research because, for example, he discovered uh, one of the first documents in 16th century, this uh, a, lay, a, a law who was uh, produced uh, 
very soon after the arrival of the Spanish colonizers in America, when they prohibit, they prohibit, come on, prohibieron, they prohibited exactly, they prohibited uh, a man to dress as a woman and a woman dress as a man. That's uh, in um, uh, that's uh, 1546, more or less. This is a document, you know, and he, I remember Giuseppe saying all the time that, I mean, saying that, fu saying that Foucault wasn't wrong when he was thinking about, you know, law and the state and the, and, and the organization of the pleasure and the body, because this happened uh, during colonization and racialization of bodies and not during enlightenment and the moder European modernity. I mean, it wasn't about 18th century, it was in 16th on 16th century, and it's totally connected with colonization. So the organization of this kind of uh, bi uh, sexual binary uh, model for Giuseppe was totally linked with colonization. So he was also tracing these uh, tracing these documents and the first law that were implemented, you know, during the conquest. And yes, yeah, I don't know if I'm answering your question, but yeah, more or less. More or less. I have a hopefully brief question. Yeah. There is another English word, travesty, you mm -hmm. know? It's different, right? It's like yeah, it means something else, but does it mean the same thing in Spanish also? Does, does the word travesty have two meanings in Spanish? No. Travesty in English, it means, what, what does it mean? It's, it's more like... So travesty means like basically it's, it's uh, how, how should I explain it? It's, it's You can say a travesty of justice, which means like. Yeah, but a travesty of justice is a misrepresentation of justice, but but it has it has a kind of, it's it's a bitter, um, it's it's in a certain sense maybe even funny, but very in a very bitter way. Mm -hmm. There's a theatrical term, you know. Mm -hmm. no, It's a, it's a um, how to say emploi actor. It's it's a, it's a type of an actor's um, uh, job. Job. Well, there is a, the one who is a play character actor. There is a hero lover. I don't know. There they have this, and there is also travesty, which means uh, it's a, for instance a woman who is playing boys in the mm -hmm. children's theater. Yeah, so th that's, I know this word from this context and actually very well. I, I do not have the impression that it's not known. Mm. No, no, it's, it's very known, but I'm just wondering if the Spanish word has the two meanings, transvestite maybe and travesty. I, I, maybe maybe the, the Spanish translation into English has these two directions. Maybe it's connected to that because playing roles and this kind of, yeah, I, I, yeah maybe it's connected. Uh, yeah, maybe. Uh, just travesty. Cross-dress, it's another possibility, yeah. Mm. Pero cuando, yeah, pero no es igual, no, pero cuando, nada. Cuando trabajamos este text, oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, when we, when we worked on this text, I think uh, we talked about the word transvestism, mm -hmm. or tra or which refers to practices of, because it's true that transvestite is not, is not the right translation for travesti, which suggests a more kind of fluid set of practices. And, and in Spanish, travesti is, doesn't, there's no, that there's no double meaning. Yeah, yeah, which is why you can't really use travesty in English because it sounds like disaster or 